welcome to Diving Into Data in SchoolNet. I'm John Mars, your SchoolNet product manager and a member of the home based training team for the Digital Teaching and Learning Division at NCDPI. And I also have with me this evening Pam Batchelor. Uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Pam. Hey, good evening. This is Pam Batchelor, and I work with John on the home based team as the product manager for Canvas and Go Open NC. Glad to be with y'all tonight. Thank you, Pam. So our agenda for this evening, we are going to start off looking at the data available on the homepage in SchoolNet. There's a lot of data just right there at the surface that can be very helpful. Uh, Then we'll dive a little bit deeper into student profiles, looking at all of the academic and demographic information that's available in SchoolNet. Uh, Then we'll shift gears a little bit and look at some of the pre-formatted reports that are available after students have taken an assessment. And then we'll also take a look at the reporting dashboard, uh, which lets you dive just a little bit deeper. We won't get too deep this evening, but a little bit deeper into assessment reporting. Uh, And then we'll wrap up with a few scenarios and resources and time for Q&A if there are any at that point. A little about the CEU again, as always, you will get 0.1 CEU for attending this evening. Uh, When you signed into WebEx, we got all of your information, so we will get certificates out for that within five business days. Um, And you will need to submit that to your PSU for credit uh, according to your local policy at your school or district. And we are recording this evening, Um, so the recording will be available hopefully next week, but keep in mind no credit can be given for watching the recording. So this evening we're going to be looking at a lot of data, Um, so if you are more comfortable just following along on my screen, that is absolutely fine. You are also welcome to log in to the SchoolNet training site. The link and a username and password are on screen. You can also, if you like, log in to the real SchoolNet with your real login, and we can you can follow along uh, with your real students in real classes. Um, We won't be creating or changing anything tonight. We're just looking at data. So if you want to get some insight onto your own students, feel free. And I'll pause for just a few moments here to let everyone get signed in. Please let us know in the chat or Q&A if you have any trouble. So we're going to start this evening with the data that is available on the homepage. Um, And I'll mention here that this slide deck does have a lot of screenshots and notes and things like that. So if you would like to review that later. Uh, That will remain available for you, Uh, but I'm going to actually show you live in the training site. And I'm using the same login that I gave all of you guys, so we will be looking at the same exact data if you are following along with me in the training site. So on the homepage, I really just want to highlight three of the main sections. So you have the choose a section widget. You've also got the Classroom Assessment Monitor widget and the Classroom Profile widget. Uh, And these are sort of your three main windows into your information, um, at least at a glance on the homepage. So in the Choose a Section widget, you will see the ability to choose any section that is assigned to you. Um, And I'll note if you are a user with a leadership role in your school or district, you do have additional drop downs here where you can pick a school and pick any teacher and then pick their sections. Otherwise, it works pretty much the same way from either level. Uh, You also get these handy shortcut buttons here to take you straight to reports, the planner, material search assessments for this particular section. Um, Moving on down. We have the classroom assessment monitor. So this widget is always going to display the data for the section that's set up here. And ditto for the classroom profile. 
So that choose a section widget really kind of controls the rest of your screen. So in the classroom assessment monitor, uh, first of all, you've got these tabs along the top that get you to various different categories of tests. So you've got your district and local tests. So those will be anything that's a state district or school wide benchmark test. You've got the classroom tests tab, which will just be your classroom tests, of course. Um, you've got standardized tests, which would be any imported standardized test. Um, for example, DPI imports the EOG and EOC scores. Um, so that would be there. And then you can also see upcoming tests for a class. Um, so this particular class doesn't have anything upcoming, but it is showing us all of the most recent tests that they've completed. So going back to the districts and local tests tab, um, right here at the top, it's going to show you which assessment you're looking at. By default, it's going to jump to the most recent assessment. Uh, but you can click on that, and it'll give you a drop down to pick any other assessment that the class has taken. Below that, you get this sort of at a glance information um, and score group comparison. So you get this nice graph that sort of summarizes how your class did. Um, let me switch to one with a greater average correct. Um, and then you also get the score group comparison that compares your section performance to the school performance and the district performance too, if it's applicable. Uh, and over on the right, you have the shortcut links to some of the pre-formatted reports that we'll look at in just a little bit. Uh, if you keep scrolling down, you're going to see performance per student on the selected exam. Uh, and it's going to group your students into these score groups and sort them by the score group. So that's a handy way to get that at a glance. And you can also filter that. So if you just want to see the students who didn't do so well, you can filter that down and see who might need reteaching or something like that. You can also flip this over to the performance by standard view if you want to see how they did on a specific standard that was assessed. So we can go in and see, it looks like, all of the kids in this class pretty much have mastered that standard. Um, and you can select others, and these filters work the same way, and you even get the uh, summary of the standard up here and an overall percentage correct for the standard. And moving on down to the classroom profile widget. So this again is based on the section you set up in the select a section widget. Um, so this is really basically just your class roster. And you've got four different views for it. So you've got the roster view, which is just going to be alphabetical. It's going to give you a primary phone number from PowerSchool, as well as a birth date. You can also view this by grades. So this is going to show you all of their stored grades for the current section you're in. Um, I will note if you don't see any grades here, it could be that your PowerSchool data manager hasn't yet stored the grades. Um, that is a decision that's kind of made locally, and there are a few different scenarios um, and different schedules um, for different schools and different plans. Uh, so some data managers might store grades every quarter, some might only store them at the end of the year, uh, some might even not store them at all if you're in K5. Uh, but any stored grade for the section will show up here. You can also view them by their most recent benchmark results, and you can filter this to particular types of tests if you're more interested in classroom tests versus school tests. Um, but it'll show you the three most recent and all of your students. And then finally, you can also see student groups if you have set those up. Um, and we won't touch on those too much tonight, but we will mention them a couple of times. So that pretty much covers it for the homepage data. Um, before we move on, are there any questions that we can answer? Uh, and we had a question about the, the grades that are shown down here in the roster. 
Um, so that would be their overall class grade from the Power Teacher Pro grade book. Um, once that grade is stored. And storing grades is a process that your data manager handles over on the Power School side. Um, so certainly reach out to them if you are not seeing grades and you're wondering why. They can probably tell you very quickly off the top of their heads. Um, and I see we had a question about the colors too. Um, so the colors that you see here are pretty much consistent across different areas in SchoolNet. Um, but essentially, it is just breaking your students out by performance. So the blue are the highest performers. Green is next down. Yellow is, I think, like 70 to 80 percent, something like that. And it just continues going on down into the orange, red, and dark red. Um, let me switch to a different assessment with more colors. So here we go. The colors correspond to these different overall percentage grades scores on an assessment. So that's kind of how SchoolNet categorizes those. All right. So let's dig a little bit deeper and talk about student profiles. So from this same home page, um, in either the classroom assessment monitor widget or the classroom profile widget, every student name is actually a link. And clicking a student name is going to take you straight to their student profile. And on the student profile, you have these tabs along the top that get you to a ton of different categories of information. Um, so we'll start with the student overview tab. You get their sort of personal information, basic demographics from power school, a parent guardian address, phone number, date of birth, that kind of thing. Um, you will also get an indicator that tells you whether or not they are LEP, um, or that might also be referred to as ESL in your district. And you will also get a note of whether or not they are AIG identified. There is a spot in here for special education, but that is not currently available in SchoolNet. But the uh, LEP and AIG are synced over from PowerSchool. Over on the right, you also get some information about their current school enrollment. So the school they're at, the grade level they're in, their homeroom, if that's been entered in PowerSchool. Um, enrollment dates, and you also get a count of their absences and tardies, and you can click on that absence number to see the dates of those absences. Moving on down, you also get their current academic record, so this is going to show you their current schedule from PowerSchool, and it's going to show you any of the stored grades for those classes that they have. So again, if your PowerSchool data manager has stored grades, then you'll see them over here in SchoolNet for all of the students' enrolled courses. And I see a great question. So you can get to this student profile for any student that's enrolled in one of your class sections. They do not have to have taken a SchoolNet assessment yet for you to see a lot of this stuff. Um, obviously, some of the tabs that are more assessment-focused, you won't see anything, but... This tab, certainly, you would see all of this information. Um, so below the academic record, you also have their current year academic performance. So this is sort of summarizing their overall performance on all of the assessments they've taken in SchoolNet this year. So this student has taken, it looks like, a couple of different ELA exams and some social sciences and history exams as well. So you can see by standards um, kind of how they're performing this school year. Uh, moving on to the next tab, um, we have the standardized test tab. Now in the training site, we don't have any data loaded for this tab, but I did pull a screenshot for you guys. So in the real school net, this is what that tab would look like. You would have all of their EOG or EOC scores that have been imported by DPI. And you can continue scrolling down this page to see um, all of the scores for a student. Um, and there are also filters here on that show filters button where you can sort of filter out some of the exams. 
The next tab is the Disciplinary Incidents tab. Now I will note that only a user with a leadership role can see data on this tab, and it's also not available in our training instance. But I did pull a screenshot. So again, as a leadership SchoolNet user, you can see the Disciplinary Incidents tab, and it gives you just very basic information about a student's disciplinary incidents, both for the current year and previous years. Um, it just gives you the date and the behavior code and response code. Um, so just a basic summary of that information available for leadership users. Moving on to the next tab, the Enrollment and Academic Record tab. Um, so this is sort of diving deeper into some of that information at the top of the Student Overview tab. So this is going to give you, first of all, all of their historical enrollment. So their current year enrollment will be at the top, and it'll go on through. And for any listed year, if they have absences or tardies, you can click on that and see the absence dates. So you can kind of see, you know, maybe if you have a student who's had an attendance issue, maybe you can go see if it's been a trend. If you keep scrolling down past that, you also get their academic record. So this is the same thing we saw on the overview tab, except you can also expand down and see previous years. So and this again, these are all the stored grades for previous years. Um, in most cases, you will see at least one stored grade here. Um, but for some elementary grades, you may not see any stored grades. Um, and that, again, just has to do with power school processes and how that works in your school. Uh, the Programs tab is going to give you sort of more detailed information. If a student is AIG identified or LEP identified, it'll give you those start and end dates if applicable. Um, so it looks like this student had an AIG identification, and that was modified at some point, but it is still ongoing. The next two tabs I'm going to kind of talk about together. Um, so benchmark tests and classroom tests. Both of these tabs work basically the same way. The student hasn't taken any classroom tests yet, but we can see the same thing on the benchmark tab. Um, so you can view it by tests or by standards. You can also filter and see previous school years and narrow down your test categories. So the test view is going to give you the subject areas and the list of tests they've taken. You can also flip over to standards view and it'll give you sort of a summary of their standards performance on those exams that they've taken. And you can click on any of these to get a little bit more information. So you can see what the correct answer was, the student's answer, time spent, all that kind of stuff. And the classroom test tab works just the same way. Uh, I am going to skip ahead a few tabs here and just point out briefly the test nav PNP tab. This is where you would enter any accommodations that a student should get on all of their tests for the year. Uh, this does need to be filled in annually, but only one of a student's teachers needs to fill this in. So once you, one teacher fills this in, all of the other teachers will see these same settings. And then jumping back a little bit to the Learning Plan and Teacher's Notes tab. This tab has been here for a while, um, but it became a little bit more relevant this past spring with the pandemic. Um, so we made a few tweaks here to make it a little bit more interesting. So here at the top, you can adjust your year and see if anything was entered for prior years. And then below that, you have all of these different categories of information that you can add notes in. So you have a parent contact log, as well as student academic strengths and opportunities for improvement, as well as behavioral strengths and opportunities. And on all three of these, you can just hit Add New and type any notes that you may have about the student that fall into that category. You can also log strategies or concerns in any of these different areas. Um, so if you hit Add Remove, it'll give you a few different options that you can add there. 
And you can also add student work or other evaluations that you might have. Um, you can upload these documents into the student's profile. And these may be particularly helpful if you're in a district where everybody uses SchoolNet. Um, this might be a good way to pass notes about students on to their next year teacher. So I believe that covers it for the student profile section. And I do see a question I do want to highlight. Can parents and students see those notes on that tab we just looked at? Um, only teachers and admins that have access to those students will be able to see that. Um, and I see one more about can teachers edit those accommodations. So yes, teachers can edit accommodations um, for students that are rostered into one of their sections. Just keep in mind that those accommodations are shared by all of a student's teachers. Um, so in, you know, a middle school or high school, especially where students are moving around between rooms and teachers, um, you'll just want to make sure you're on the same page if you're all using SchoolNet. So with all that said, let's move on to pre-formatted reports. So these are sort of quick and easy reports that you can get um, after students have taken an assessment in SchoolNet. Um, and these are available on both classroom tests as well as school district or state benchmarks. So I'm going to jump back into the training site and I am here on the home page. Um, and I'm just going to grab this most recent assessment in the classroom assessment monitor and jump to the test summary report here. So this brings us to the test report test summary page. And I do want to point out that all of those other pre-formatted reports that were linked there on the home page are also tabs on this page. So you can very easily look at all these different reports sort of in one place, and they all work very similarly. Um, so at the top here on all of these reports, you'll have this drop down to select different sections. Um, so if this is an assessment that all of my sections have taken, I can switch and look at all my sections overall. So we'll go ahead and do that, and it'll update the whole report to reflect that selection. Um, if you are a school or district leader administrator, um, you would be able to select different teachers and schools as well. Moving on down the page, you get a reminder of what test this is. You can link out to the test details page if you need to refresh your memory about which test that was. And then down below the tabs, we have sort of similar to the... Um, classroom assessment monitor we looked at on the home page. It's giving you this nice little graph of your students performance and it's breaking out your score groups and giving you this more detailed information on that. Um, you can also check over here on the right. Um, so we've got 89 students across these sections but only 86 results. And we could go look at the collection report here to see who's missing, basically. So it looks like we're missing one student in each class. And we can click down and see who that was that didn't take this test for whatever reason. And you could even click their name here to get back to their profile and maybe double check their attendance for that day. Maybe they were just out. Um, and I'll point out you can also export this particular report to a PDF. Uh, so if you want to pull a copy of this for your records, you can always do that. Moving down below that, you're going to get sort of a performance comparison, and you have these different views that you can view it by. Uh, it's going to default to student. So right now it's showing me I've selected the all sections. So it's showing me the overall results for all of these students here at the top. And you can mouse over this little score group graph to get this more detailed table, which by the way is the same as this table. And you can also scroll down through here to look at individual students and their average scores and score group and proficiency. And you can sort by these various different tabs. You could sort by average score even, and that'll kind of give you your score groups real quickly at a glance. 
And again, you can click any of these student names to get back to their student profile and view any of that information. We can also flip this over to a subgroup view so we can see the overall statistics by subgroup. And you can click on any of these number of students here to see exactly who that is. You get their average score and proficiency, and you can mouse over this score groups bar yet again to get the more detailed statistics on that. And finally, you can also view it by standard. So this is going to list all of the standards that were assessed on this particular assessment, number of items, and the average score for the selected section. And again, you can sort by that so we can see maybe these are two standards that we need to take a closer look at with this class. Moving on, so we're going to jump to the standards analysis report. So you could click straight into standards analysis from the home page, or we can just hit the standards analysis tab here to switch over into that report. And it's going to remember which class we had selected. So I selected all sections before, and that is still the case here. So the standards analysis report is laid out just a little bit differently. So it's giving us a bar graph that summarizes our class's performance on each of these standards. And we can order the columns either by standard or by performance, high to low or low to high, either way. Um, and you can mouse over to see more detail the exact standard text and the average score and how many aligned items there were. And just like before, you can scroll down to get the more detailed data table. So, and since this is a district level benchmark, this is giving me the district level information, the school level information, the section level information based on which section I chose, and then the individual student information. And again, all of these student names are links, so you can jump out to their profile. And you can also sort this entire table by the average score on any of these standards. And this report can also be exported to Excel. So if you are a data geek and you like to play with it in Excel, that is there for you. I used to have a teacher who would export all of his standards analysis and put it into this master sheet he had with all his EVOS data. and He had some real interesting stuff going on. So I'm going to move on next to the item analysis report. And this one does take just a minute to load. Um, and I saw someone asked earlier about SchoolNet speed. The training site is slower than the production site. So please do bear with us while that loads. Um, but where the last report was looking sort of a standards focused view of the assessment data, this is giving you a more item focused view of the assessment data. So you have your order by options here, and you can highlight the low-performing students if you want at the top. It gives you a key for the table, so a check is going to be a correct response. A through E would be whatever they picked that was the wrong answer. Um, a dash for no response or multiple response, and a pound sign for number of points awarded, or an open-ended or multiple choice, something like that. And this report can be exported as a PDF or to Excel. So you have both options here. This one's a little bit less graphical and more heavy. But up here at the top, you're getting your overall information. So for the entire section, again, that you have selected up here at the very top, you have your total overall score. And then for each item, you're getting an analysis of the section's overall score on that item what the primary standard for that item is. And if an item has multiple standards, you can hit show all alignments to see all of them. You also get the point value for each item and it shows you the correct answer for each item. You can also expand the section-wide percent to see the school-wide and district-wide percents um, if those are applicable to the test. And 
And just like the other ones, moving on down, we get to our individual student data. So for each item, so remember we've just got item one, two, three, four through eight on down, and then they've got their total. It shows us what they got right, what they got wrong, what they answered wrong, and how much time they spent. So this might be helpful for identifying some patterns or things like that. Um, for example, I think it was item six. So item six, our entire, all of our classes here, since we have all sections selected, did pretty poorly on that. And so did the school, and so did the district. And so if we click on the item six title here, it'll take us to that item. We can see what it was. And it'll show us that this was, you know, C was the most common error. So maybe it's a bad question, or maybe it's an opportunity to reteach that particular item. Um, and you can sort and see what happened in your particular class. So in this class, we do have a bunch of students who answered B. We also have a whole bunch who answered C on this one. So that might be something we could review for the next assessment. Moving on to the next one, we have the Standards Mastery Report. So this is a report that kind of gives you a more longitudinal view of a student's standards mastery um, based not only on this assessment, but other assessments they've taken that are tied to the same standards. So on the Standards Mastery screen, you do have two view options, either score groups or you can view the overall section average. You've got a table key again, and you can also export this report to a PDF. And you can also choose whether you want to see the primary alignments only or all alignments if there were multiples. And down here at the bottom, so each of these standards is a standard that's linked to this assessment. It's giving you the number of test items on this particular assessment. And it's showing you how many students scored in each score group for each standard. Um, you've also got this undetermined column for students who did not take the test. And over here on the right, you've also got the times taught, scheduled, and assessed tabs. So if you are using the lesson planning features in SchoolNet, you would see how many times it was taught. If it has been on a scheduled assessment, you would see that. And you'll also see the number of times it was assessed. So this first standard here has been assessed three times for the student. And we can click on that three to see what those three exams were. And that pretty much covers it for the pre-formatted reports that I wanted to cover. Um, do we have any questions on pre-formatted reports before we dig even deeper a little bit into the reporting dashboard? It looks like our Q&A and chat are quiet. So let's move on to the reporting dashboard. Um, so we're only really going to scratch the surface of this this evening, um, but it's a pretty cool place, I think. So I'm going to go back out to my homepage first of all. So we've seen the overall data on the homepage. We've seen data on a single assessment. But if we go over into the navigation on the right and expand the reporting section and go into the reporting dashboard, this is going to kind of bring everything together. So up here at the very, very top, top right, one of my favorite things, you can change this reporting dashboard to show you previous school years. So maybe if you're working with a colleague and they have a question about a former student, you can go back and maybe remind yourself of that. Down below that, you are very similar to the re pre-formatted reports we just looked at. You can select which section you want to look at. 
And again, if you are a school or district leader role, you would be able to pick other schools and other teachers here. Um, moving down, you have these two tabs. You can look at test results, or you can look at individual student reports. Um, I'll be honest, this isn't terribly different than the student data we looked at on the homepage, but it is another way to view a lot of the same stuff. Um, and you can also hit this little person icon over here to get to any of those tabs that we looked at on the student profile. Jumping back to test results, um, over here on the right, you can view standards performance overall. Um, this is going to jump you out to a new tab, but based on that section you selected, um, you can see their overall performance in the standards for the subject area you teach. You can choose other subject areas as well, if you like. See how they're doing over there on those standards. I go back to the reporting dashboard here. So moving on down into the actual list of assessments, so we can look at benchmark tests or standardized. Again, that would be an EOG, EOC, something that was imported. Um, but the benchmark test category is going to list all of the benchmark tests that a student has taken for the school year or for whatever time period you've got selected up here. You can search for a particular test by name or ID. If you've got a lot listed here, you can change your sort options. Um, you can look at different categories of reports or of tests. Maybe you want to see all of them, not just yours. So you could clear the filters to see everybody's exams for those students. Flip that back on. Um, and you can also filter out to see classroom tests only. Looking at the actual list of assessments, it's giving you this same score groups graph that we've seen previously, and you again can mouse over that to get the more detailed statistics at a glance. You also get your number of student results and average score for all of those. And this little graphs button will take you back to all of those pre-formatted reports that we were looking at earlier. Another kind of neat thing you can do, and this is a newer feature here, is the comparison report. So perhaps you have given a, a quarter one and a quarter two benchmark, and you want to compare how your students did on those two tests. You can select those tests here um, in the list, and down here at the bottom, it's going to pop up this bar that lets you, tells you you've selected two assessments and once you've selected all the ones you want to look at you'll hit compare assessments down here and this is going to pop up sort of the assessment comparison report builder so it's going to summarize what you're looking at who you are where you are you can add additional assessments here if you realize you left one out you can change the sort option um, you know, maybe you want to see the newest test first and then the oldest test. And you can decide which of these scores you want to see on your final report. You might want to see all of them. You might just want to see some of them. I'm going to narrow mine down just a little bit. You can also use this trash can. Maybe you've included a test and you've decided you actually don't want to see that. You can yank that off at this point. You can also choose whether you want to see the student name, or the student ID, or both. And you can also add additional data to your report. So maybe you want to see the number of absences a student has had this semester or this year. Uh, maybe you also want to see whether or not they're AIG identified or LEP identified. Um, you can add these different things here. You can also drag and drop them if you want to reorder them. And you can also select programs to display. Um, in this case, they're no different than the gifted or EL flags, so I'm not going to bother, but you could do that. And once you've got this the way you like, you'll hit Generate Report to actually get over to your report.
So this brings you to the actual assessment comparison report. So again, you get the summary of what you're looking at here at the top. Um, it reminds you you selected two assessments. If you wanted to add more assessments at this point, you still could do that. You could also edit the report if you realize that you set one of those options wrong that we just looked at. You could edit the report and fix it. You can also save the report. So if you know you're going to be looking at the same report for a couple days or a couple different times, you can save it. And that will add it to your saved reports over here. And you again can mess with that sort by that we looked at on the previous screen. Coming on down into the actual report, we've got very similar to a lot of the reports we've looked at. You've got a performance comparison tab or a standards comparison tab. You've got how many students it's for, and you can hover over the chart for more information. So this is the performance comparison on the most recent exam compared to the first exam, and you're getting your district average score, your high school average score, and then your section average score. You can also view it as score group graphs. So those same colored graphs that we've been seeing everywhere else, you can view it that way and mouse over and see that same score group table that we've seen. We can also flip into standards comparison. And so this is going to show us from a standards view how these two assessments compare. So we're at standard level one. We could drill down. So each bar is each of the exams showing us how the students did on each standard. And again, we can view this as the average score or as score groups. I'm going to flip back to the performance comparison. Just like some of the other reports below the pretty graphs, you get the detailed tables. Um, and again, you can see this by student, by grade, this particular assessment. Well, this one hasn't been, but an assessment may have been taken by more than one grade level in some cases. So you would see that there. You can also see it by subgroup. And another nice thing you can do with this is filter this entire table. So you can, if you want to pick a handful of students to look at, you can filter to maybe just your AIG identified students. You could also maybe look at just your EL identified students. And you can also filter the scores. So we selected previously, we said we wanted to see the score and the score group. So we could filter this down. Maybe we want to see everyone who made between a 40 and a 70 and was gifted. That will give us all of those students. And we can flip back and see, all right, we don't care about AIG identified. Let's look at everyone. And you can combine these filters as well. So maybe you want to see everyone who got between a 40 and a 70 on that test and you want to see everyone who got between also got between a 40 and 50 on the test before that. So you can combine these filters and really drill this down. I'm going to clear all my filters here. Um, you can also do the same thing on the grade and subgroup views both. I'm also going to flip over to the standards comparison tab. We get kind of the same story here, so let's let's look at all the standards. Why not? So this added a whole bunch of info to our report, but we get the graphs up at the top just like before, and then we get all of the per standard details below that. All of the nice score group graphs and all of the different stuff. Pretty similar to what we've seen before, but maybe a little more detailed. Um, and you can also click these little icons to get out to more detailed views of particular standards and individual students' performance on those standards. And you can also export this as visible data to Excel or plain student data to CSV. So do you want it pretty or do you want it uh, for a computer to mangle? Your pick.
And I think that that pretty much covers it for what I have time to go over in the reporting dashboard and the assessment comparison report. Um, do we have any questions on assessment comparison or the reporting dashboard that we can cover? Looks like we're quiet, so I will take that as a good sign. Um, and we are coming up on time. So for this last section, I just had a, a few scenarios and resources that I wanted to throw out there. Um, my colleague Pam actually gave a very similar webinar to this back in April. And she had these scenarios at the end that I just thought were kind of a neat way to, to recap what we've looked at. Um, so these are all sort of questions or scenarios that you might have found yourself in in the classroom. Um, I've certainly heard them before. Um, and we've looked at all of these this evening, right? So how could you create some quick reteaching groups based on performance on an assessment? And, you know, SchoolNet does have a student groups feature that we sort of vaguely mentioned tonight. Um, but you could very quickly just simply break your kids up into groups just looking at their most recent assessment performance on the homepage even, right? You could also drill in a little bit deeper in a pre-formatted report. Uh, maybe just the test summary, and just quickly split your kids up that way. Um, we also looked at viewing an individual student's performance data. You know, how did this individual student do on this most recent exam, on past exams? So we looked at how you, we can kind of start to dig into that a little bit. Um, we also talked about maybe diagnosing a low score on a recent assessment. Uh, maybe you have a student that didn't perform as well as you expected, you can go see maybe they were absent a lot prior to that. Um, maybe you have some stored grades in the system and you can go check their class grades. Um, you know, maybe something's going on that you can work with them on. Um, and we also looked at, you know, maybe you want to, maybe you've been giving a first and second quarter benchmark and you want to compare your AIG students' performance, for example. Maybe you want to make sure that they are growing and they're not just hanging out, um, you might be able to look at the assessment comparison report and check up on them that way. Um, I also wanted to leave you with some additional resources. Um, so I do have linked here the SchoolNet training site that we used this evening that is something that you are able to use. Um, see your district level SchoolNet person for your district's training logins. And if you are that person and you don't know what your training logins are, certainly reach out to me and let me know. Um, I also linked really the next three buttons are sort of the same thing, but the DPI SchoolNet Google site, our webinars, and our documents. Um, so Pam had this awesome SchoolNet Google site already, and I have sort of made it my own a little bit. So we have the webinars page which will list any upcoming webinars and take you to our recorded webinars. I'll have the most recent one recording embedded here, and you can view more on YouTube. I also have the new documents page, so this is listing out for you every quick reference document or quick reference card, as Pearson SchoolNet calls them. Um, so these are all the ones that I can find, and I am adding more as I come across them. And I also listed out separately all of the training presentations that we had. So all of the ones that Pam had here, and as well as all of the ones that I've done so far. Um, even this evening's is already listed. So these resources are here for you. Feel free to grab them at any time, use them, remix them, go for it. They are there for you. Um, so I will certainly hang out here until 8 o'clock. Um, but that is it for our prepared content this evening. Um, before you go, I do want to point out that the word feedback here on the slide deck is a link. And that will take you to this nice little feedback form. We would love to get your feedback, um, not only on our meeting platform and kind of how I did this evening, um, but also, if you have any suggestions for future webinars or especially any topics you'd like to see us cover in spring of 2021, 
We only have one more webinar scheduled for 2020 in December, which will be, I believe, on advanced assessment creation. Uh, but we are still building our topic list for the spring. So if you have any thoughts on those topics we could look at, please, please give them to me there. So if you don't have any questions, we thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and we thank you in advance for giving us that feedback. Um, and again, like I said, I will certainly hang out here for a little bit longer if anyone is hurriedly typing a question. So, John, I will say um, just that Julia had in the chat um, asking about how teachers um, go over um, performance and results and do corrections in SchoolNet. And so she, uh, her and I were kind of discussing in the chat if teachers um, do a group discussion on missed questions? Do they assign um, students a corrections table? Um, do we make like a collaborative assignment to help students? And I kind of shared with her a few thoughts um, about what I did. Um, if it was more of a formative assessment, something um, we were, you know, continuing to still learn about as a unit study, um, we did a lot of group discussions with the most frequently missed questions, um, but if it was a more formal assessment for something that I did for the end of a unit or test, um, I would do individual corrections uh, where they had to um, not only um, change it to the correct answer, but they also had to provide a justification and two sources. Um, so like a textbook or notes from class or something like that of where they got that information from. Um, to help them kind of cement it in their memory. Uh, but um, I'm happy to hear anybody else's thoughts as well, if anyone else wants to share how they do um, feedback and corrections. Thank you, Pam. And the, those are pretty much the, the same ones I've heard of. Um, I know in my previous life at a charter, I had a um, fifth grade math teacher who used SchoolNet religiously. Um, and so she would always sort of discuss with her class sort of the overall trends, and then she would let them do individual test corrections. Um, and I think she would even sometimes, you know, depending on the complexity of the test, she might make a new copy of it and let them take it again with their corrections and their reflections in mind, um, just so they could show that growth. Yeah, I've, I've done that as well. I even changed all the question types to all open responses. Uh, so that way they got the same questions, but they had to write it out. Um, and they could use their their test corrections and notes that they've been working on um, to justify those answers. Oh, I like that. A little bit more work to go back in and grade them, but I felt like it cemented the learning process. And great data to use for later. Our chat and Q&A seem quiet. Um, we've got a lot of folks dropping off. Um, we'll certainly hang out here for just a few more moments. If you are typing something hurriedly. Um, but if not, thank you again for joining us this evening. We hope you have a great Veterans Day tomorrow. Hopefully you get some time off and get some time to thank a vet. And otherwise have a great school year. We will see you next month, perhaps. Mm -hmm.